couldn't be a better time to have the editor and publisher of the Gloom Boom Doom Report, gloomboomdoom.com, uh, economist Mark Faber. I can't go over his illustrious bio in the time we have the next 25 minutes, uh, but uh, he, of course, graduated at 24 with a Ph.D. in economics, magna cum laude, and uh, he joins us from Thailand today, a, a real expert on world markets, especially what's happening in Asia. And I've got so much to discuss with him on oil, gold, uh, what's going to happen with the Chinese. Could they dump a bunch of gold on the market where he sees everything going? Uh, we have to say his forecasting is among some of the most accurate in the world. Again, gloomboomdoom.com. Mr. Faber, good to have you here with us. It's my pleasure. Okay, well, you've got the floor from Thailand. Uh, what in the world is going on right now on this planet? What do you see happening? Well, basically, we have to go back to the, the 1970s to fully understand what happened. In the 1970s, they printed money in the U.S., and commodity prices went ballistic. And they overshot on the upside because of the money printing. And after 1980, they then declined because as they went up too much, supplies came into the market. So all commodities went down until 1998. During the decline in commodity prices, no new mining was undertaken, no exploration took place, no new oil fields were looked because as prices went down, there was no economic reason to look for new oil. But then, after 1998, commodity prices started to rise, and because of the combination of the opening of China, the incremental demand from China, and also increasingly India and other emerging economies, commodity prices started to go up, and because of the money printing in the U.S. by this uh, rather despicable character, Mr. Bernanke, they went ballistic. And so we have very high inflation in most countries. And in many countries, this high inflation in food prices, energy prices, has had an impact on the wallet of the typical household. Because whereas in the U.S. we say a per capita income of $40,000, food is not a huge component in people's income in emerging economies, where, say, the per capita income in Vietnam, India, is only $1,000 per year, food and energy make maybe 50% of people's income. And, of course, you're now, uh, uh, I guess, alluding to what we see happening in North Africa. Libya, uh, now it looks like, is basically falling uh, to the rebellion. Reportedly, Muammar Gaddafi has fled to Venezuela. Um, what is driving uh, these revolutions that we're seeing popping up around the world? And if it is overall dollar devaluation and commodity increases, uh, how much worse is it going to get? I mean, how bad is the uh, inflation going to get? Well, the really big question is whether this uh, unrest we have in Tunisia, Libya, Bahrain, Egypt will spread to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. If they do, it will be very difficult for the U.S. to take sides because on the one hand, the U.S. has supported the vicious regimes of a Mr. Mubarak. They have supported the royal family of Saudi Arabia. They never asked Saudi Arabia to have reforms and democracy, whereas they embargo countries like Myanmar. So where will they stand? What can they do? And the CIA is completely useless. They had no idea that the unrest would start. They had no ground information that something was going on. And so the U.S., and particularly this uh, 
incapable president that the U.S. has has no way to react properly. Mr. Faber, uh, I mean, looking at this as an economist and as a forecaster, uh, obviously it's spreading. Uh, the inflation is intensifying. How, how bad in the near term and the long term do you see the inflation getting? I know you don't want to, you can't make exact predictions, but what do you see happening in the, uh, to the dollar? What do you see happening to gold, silver, other commodities? I mean, they're skyrocketing right now. Well, I would say the following. I have a large subscriber base. I asked all my subscribers to please send me an email if they have the feeling that their cost of living were going up by less than 5% per annum. I didn't receive a single email. And so I think that the inflation or the cost of living increases in the U.S. and elsewhere is much higher than what the government is publishing. And I think this is having a negative impact on consumption because obviously the cost of necessities, insurance, taxes, food, energy, is going up very rapidly. And my answer to all this is the worse the economic conditions will become, the worse the geopolitical conditions will become, the more Mr. Bernanke and his fellow Fed governors will print money. And so I'm not ultra bearish on equities. I think they will now correct because the market is way overbought. And so we can easily have a correction of 10, 15%. But I think as soon as the market drops, say, 15, 20%, QE3 will come into play. And all that is favorable for silver and gold. Now, the question is, is gold and silver expensive or is it cheap? Say, in 1999, you could buy an ounce of gold for $252. Now it's $1,400. Is it cheap or expensive? Well, in a money-printing environment, it's very difficult to decide what is expensive and what is cheap. Because the function of money to be a unit of account and a store of value is being lost through the money printing. And so my view would be, yeah, relative to 99, the price of gold is expensive at $1,400. But relative to the money printing, maybe not. And so my advice to all your listeners, is to gradually accumulate gold. Don't trade it, don't buy it on margin, just gradually accumulate it. And not so much month as an... by month. Yeah, not so much as an investment or just as a hedge against inflation? Not to own any gold is to trust the U.S. government, to trust that they will ever balance the budget again. I don't think they will ever balance the budget again, and I think the budget deficit will range between one and a half trillion dollars to two trillion dollars for the next five years. I don't think they'll come down. And basically, I think the U.S. government is bankrupt. Sir. But before they go, they will not default on the debt. They will just print money. And not to own gold and silver is to trust Mr. Panenki. Now go and look at his speeches. And then you tell me whether you rather trust gold or Mr. Panenki. We're talking to Mark Faber, the GloomBoomDoom.com uh, website, editor and publisher of the Gloom Boom Doom uh, report. We have links to it up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. So for a radio host sitting here in Austin, Texas, uh, Dr. Faber, uh, looking at this, uh, uh, you've been completely right in, in, in your long-term you know, uh, breakdowns of what's happened. 
uh, the mainstream media uh, uh, moguls uh, in financial news continue to put out disinformation because they have a vested interest in not giving their listeners and viewers the real truth so they can position themselves while continuing to milk and sucker the public. But but do we just see a gradual dollar devaluation causing you know ongoing commodity increases, or is there a danger of of some type of hyper event, some type or, 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 or a group of stairs that we basically bounce down, uh, you know, to the bottom uh, and and knowing knowing the policies of the Western world, uh, you know, versus what you would do to fix it. And I want to ask you that in a moment. What's the end game? I mean, what's the time frame? Two, three, four, five, ten years. What do we look like at the end of this? Something like uh, 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 Japan with just an eternal recession? Yes. Japan didn't have high inflation, and because prices came down, actually, real income went up. So Japan is not all that badly off. What, however, happened is that government debt went ballistic, and I think that now. Japan will have more inflation through food prices and energy prices, and that this will be bad for the yen and also for Japanese government bonds. And that will then drive money out of cash bonds into equity. So I'm actually quite positive about the Japanese stock market. But in the case of the U.S., I think they will inflate and they will print money. And the question whether we will have hyperinflation, I think we will have high inflation rates, much higher than is generally perceived, but maybe not tomorrow, maybe only in three or four years or five years or so. But I think it will happen. Well, and Rory, concerning the dollar, the question is, Against what will it go down? The other paper currencies are not much better. The euro is not much better than the U.S. dollar. It may be slightly better, but not much better. And so the only true currencies that exist today are gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Uh, doctor, let me throw this in at you then. Um, obviously, the Chinese realize that, and that's why they are they are now the biggest gold producer, uh, are they not? I mean, clearly, they see where this is going, and if you have all these currencies, including the SDRs and the QE2 and the coming QE3, if they're all just basically another layered fiat derivative mix, uh, then what you're, I mean, is the only outcome of this debt black hole that gold and silver do emerge uh, in the end as... Yeah. The Yes, provided it's not taken away from you. And I'd like to add that the U.S. has been printing money. But the others have done exactly the same. It's global. And so I think all the currencies will lose value against gold and silver. But there are other avenues. Say, throughout history, gold has frequently been taken away, expropriated. Even in the U.S. in 1933, they didn't expropriate it. They paid $25 an ounce. But then, after collecting all the gold from U.S. citizens, including going to the safe deposit boxes with sheriffs to take it out, they revalued it to $35. So I think today... The U.S. government may take it away one day, they'll pay the price, and after they'll revalue it five times or whatever it is. But I think another avenue is to own farmland. And I think that real estate prices in the U.S. have come down. Okay, they may go down another 10%. But relatively to other countries and internationally, and after having declined, if you can find the house you like, I think it's not a bad time to buy a house in the U.S. It may not go up in value, but it may preserve its mm -hmm. value.